Sure. My name is Eric Frankel. I'm the CEO and co-founder of MemSQL. Uh, we build a real-time analytics platform. Previous to MemSQL, I was at Facebook, and uh, one of the benefits and joys of working at Facebook is just dealing with enormous sort of scale uh, of data problems. And you can really see that Facebook itself was solving problems three to five years ago that enterprises are now facing today. Uh, the difference, though, of course, is Facebook has an army of engineers and PhDs to do it, and uh, we decided to start the company to really encapsulate these design principles into an easy uh, database tier package that everyone can use. I think it's, a, it's fundamentally the difference between uh, scaling up, which was how it, it's, it's been done and used to be done, and how it's going to go to scale out, uh, which is what our system does. It's how Facebook scales, obviously, in commodity hardware. Uh, it's really when you combine all that into one solution that you can actually attach lots and lots of commodity machines together and actually get a lot of value out of it. So there's, there's a fundamental issue around big data. There's, there's volume, there's velocity, and there's variety. We focus on the velocity and the volume aspects. If we look at how big data works, there's a lot of data flowing into a given system. And you can basically see that the, the database has typically been the bottleneck. Um, as, data, as more and more data accrues and basically flows into this system, uh, scaling that has always been the issue. You can put a cache in front of it. Uh, you can actually partition data, but fundamentally a lot of the, the issues around scale has always been around the database and how you actually manage that. To make things more complicated, you have also more data coming out of the system. Typically, this would be uh, OLAP. These are the OLAP queries flowing in. These are the OLTP queries going into the database. What we really focus on is really sort of expanding what is typically a bottleneck around the system here and really expanding it outward with uh, attaching more and more machines. So by adding more and more databases into the system in a, a transparent way, you can actually remove the bottleneck here and allow more data to flow in and out. So that's the overview around how volume and velocity really work together. Um, in terms of how we actually design the system, our system is pretty straightforward. It's a, a two-tiered approach. Uh, we have an aggregator tier, and there can be n number of aggregators. And then we have a leaf node tier. And the leaf node tier is responsible for the storage aspect and the compute aspect. So in terms of what a leaf node does, LeafNode is responsible simply for just storing and computing that data. Aggregator is where the intelligence goes. And because it's a shared nothing architecture, the leaf nodes are unaware of each other. Uh, so as a application would connect to the system, in this case up here, the application is just going to pick one of these aggregators. And it's going to be a single database connection uh, into this database system. And because the aggregators are responsible for metadata about how that data is stored, uh, it simply is able to actually traverse and access this data and uh, sum it, aggregate it, and compute upon it very readily. So for the application perspective, it sees a single database connection, uh, which is fantastic because the application doesn't have to worry about data locality or data movement, which are typically the big, big uh, faults in any sort of distributed system managing that. So that's the overview of MemSQL right there. The next issue that we'll be tackling is how to actually address the all-time historical aspect. If we look at you know, the standard memory pyramid, at the top, uh, there's the RAM that we always use. Below that is typically the SSD layer. And then lastly, we have a hard disk. Uh, most databases today use hard disk primarily for storage. What makes us very unique uh, in, the, in the next generation sort of phase of, of uh, in-memory databases is that we can very much intelligently span across this tier to actually store a lot of data. What you might imagine as we go forward is actually going further down into the memory pyramid just to store petabytes upon petabytes of data. Um, and expect to see some really cool announcements uh, next release about how we'll accomplish that.